In this video, we're going to look at the regiochemistry of the Diels-Alder reaction, or what region of the molecules will the reaction take place. And so here I have my diene, and I can see I have a group coming off of carbon one of my diene, right? So if this is carbon one of my diene, I have a methoxy group coming off of it. And the methoxy group is going to function as an electron donating group. And it can function as an electron donating group because this oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons on it like that. So if one of these lone pairs moved in here to form a bond, that would kick these electrons off onto here, and then these pi electrons would go off onto that carbon. So if we were to draw the resonance structure, right, we would go ahead and we'll go ahead and sketch in our oxygen here, which is now double bonded to this carbon, and then our, the rest of the molecule here, right, there'd be a double bond right here. And let me go ahead and extend that out a little bit. And we would have, uh, we would still have a lone pair of electrons on my top oxygen. And then we would have these electrons out here on that carbon. So when we assign formal charges, right, this top oxygen here gets a plus one formal charge. And the carbon down here at the bottom would get a negative charge like that. So it's a carb anion in this resonance structure. And so, when I think about the resonance hybrid, right, I have, um, I have two structures that contribute to the resonance hybrid. And this carbon down here, because of the presence of that electron donating group, is going to get a little bit of a uh, negative charge, right? So that carbon in, in magenta would correspond to this carbon down here. And once again, the presence of that electron donating group makes that partially negative, right? When it, in, in the resonance hybrid, there's a little bit of negative, negative charge associated with that carbon. When I look at the dienophile over here on the right with the aldehydes, right, we already studied the resonance structures for, for the dienophile and the presence of an electron withdrawing group, right? So this carbonyl here is going to end up with the oxygen being partially negative, this carbon right here being partially positive, and then the presence of that electron withdrawing group withdraws electron density away from this carbon as well, so it's, our, so it's, so it's partially positive like that. And so you can check out the first video we did for the Diels-Alder mechanism to see the resonance structures for, for the dienophile with its electron withdrawing group. So when I think about how these two molecules are going to react in a Diels-Alder reaction, the regiochemistry, all I have to do is line up those charges. I know opposite charges attract. So the negatively charged carbon would be attracted to the positively charged carbon like that. And that's going to help determine uh, the regiochemistry for this reaction here. And so when I think about the mechanism, I know I'm going to form a bond there. I know I'm going to form a bond between these two carbons for my Diels-Alder mechanism. And let's go ahead and follow my electrons around like we've done before. So, um, so these electrons right in here in red, these pi electrons are going to move in here to form that new bond between those two carbons. And then the pi electrons on, on my dienophile right here, I'm going to say the ones in blue, are the ones that are going to move into here to form this bond. And then finally, the, uh, finally, the electrons in magenta right here here are going to move in to form a double bond like that. So that's going to be the movement of electrons. And when I <clears throat> when I go ahead and draw my product, right, I'm going to have a cyclohexene ring like that. And uh, let's do that one again. So I'm going to have a cyclohexene ring. And the double bond is going to be right here. And then my methoxy group would be right here like that. And my aldehydes would be over here on this carbon. So that would be my molecule. Only thinking about regiochemistry. Let's go ahead and follow those electrons. The electrons in red were right here. The electrons in blue became these electrons in this bond right here. And then in magenta are these electrons. So this is my Diels-Alder product. And when I think about when I think about the relationship of those substituents, right, the methoxy group to the aldehyde, they're right next to each other on my ring. So you could say they're in a one, two relationship if you wanted to, like one and two. So I'm not talking about nomenclature here. I'm just saying the fact that these two substituents are right next to each other. So you could say that's a one, two relationship, or you could call that ortho. Okay, so an ortho relationship. And when I think about um, the stereochemistry, both carbons one and two on my diagram there are chirality centers, 
right? So, so this carbon is a chirality center, and so is this one. So when I think about stereochemistry, I need to think about the mechanism in three dimensions. So now that we've done regiochemistry, now that we know um, how these molecules are going to interact in terms of the position in space, let's think about the three dimensionality of this reaction. So if I get a little space down here, right, I can go ahead and draw my diene. All right, so here's my diene. And I know that I have a methoxy group coming off of my diene like that. And since I know that this carbon is going to be a chirality center, I should also draw in the hydrogen on this carbon, because I'm going to need to think about where that hydrogen goes. And my dienophile right, is going to interact with um, the diene. Now I know that the aldehyde is going to be on the same side as the methoxy group because that that lines the charges up as we've seen before. When I think about when I think about the endo rule, I realize that the carbonyl has to be has to be over here on this side if it's going to interact with the developing pi bond. And I know that this carbon right here is eventually going to be a chirality center, so I have to draw in the hydrogen like that. And so now, now I'm doing both regiochemistry and stereochemistry, thinking about the endo rule. And when I think about the mechanism, right, I know this carbon is going to attach to this one. I know this carbon right here is going to attach to this one. So I can go ahead and draw the product here. right? I know I'm going to form my ring, my six-membered ring, like that. And I know my double bond is going to form back here. And so now I have to think about uh, the stereochemistry of this reaction, right? So I'm going to first focus in on this carbon, which is the one in blue, which would correspond to this over here. The inside substituent on that carbon is this hydrogen here. And so we know that the inside substituents are going to go up. So I can go ahead and draw on my hydrogen going up. My outside substituent is the methoxy group. So that's going to go down. Right, relative relative to this ring here. So the carbon in blue has rehybridized, right, from an sp2 hybridized carbon to an sp3 hybridized carbon. Next, I'm going to look at the carbon in magenta down here, and uh, and for this one, I know that my hydrogen is going to stay right there, right where it is, right. So the hydrogen is going to stay right here, and the carbonyl is also going to stay where it is back there, like that, because of the concerted mechanism, right. Everything happens at the same time. The movement of six pi electrons at the same time. So here's my product, um, but we, we, don't, we don't usually draw it like that, of course. If we were to, uh, if we were to put our eye right, staring down at this guy like that, right, uh, let's go ahead and draw what we see. Right? We would see our ring. So we get, go ahead and draw our ring right here, like that. And then when we look at the carbon in blue, right? the carbon in blue corresponds to this carbon right here. And the first thing our eye would hit would be this hydrogen here. So we draw that hydrogen as a wedge. So here's a wedge. And the methoxy group would therefore be a dash, like that. So we can go ahead and put our methoxy group in there. And when I look at the carbon in magenta, right? So this is the carbon in magenta, which would correspond to this carbon right here. This time, the hydrogen will be coming out at me after I after I unfold that molecule there on the left, right? So, uh, so the hydrogen will be coming out at me this time, and the aldehyde would therefore be going away from me like that. So this is the endo product. Right, the endo product and also the ortho product here. When I when I think about these two molecules and how they could approach each other in space, right? Well, I could have I could have drawn it like this as well, right? So when I when I look at this, right, I know that the presence of this electron donating group on my diene is going to make this carbon down here the partial negative one. And due to the presence of the electron withdrawing group on my dienophile, this carbon right here is going to be partially positive. Right? So then these are going to line up right here. And then, of course, if I form my other bond, it would go like that. So let's go ahead and sketch this mechanism in three dimensions. Right? So if I were to draw my diene this time, I have my methoxy group over here on the left side, right? So methoxy groups on the left side, and I have to sketch in this hydrogen because I know this is going to be a chirality center. And so when I draw my my dienophile down here, once again I, I know that the aldehyde is going to be on the left, <clears throat> so so the charges line up. And I also have to think about the endo rule, which means my carbonyl is going to be over here like that. 
And so when I when I go ahead and show the bonds that form, right? This bond is going to form right here. This bond is going to form right here. And once again, I should have sketched in this hydrogen because this carbon is going to be uh, is going to end up as a chirality center. So when I go ahead and draw the product. Right, I go ahead and draw my ring that's going to form. I know my double bond is going to form right here. And let's once again focus in on this carbon, which is now this carbon right here. The inside substituent is the hydrogen, so that goes up. The methoxy group is going to go down relative to the plane of the ring, since it's the outside substituent. And when I focus in on the carbon in magenta right here, that's this carbon, right? So the hydrogen uh, is going to stay right here like that and the carbonyl will be like this and so once again that is the that is the folded state uh, the folded molecule if we unfold the molecule we get a slightly better picture of what it looks like so my double bond would go right here the carbon in blue corresponds to this carbon and uh, once again I can see that if my eye is here the first substituent that I would that I would see is this hydrogen so that hydrogen is going to show as a wedge the methoxy group would therefore be going away from me in space, so I, so I draw that. And then the carbon in magenta would be this carbon. And once again, when you when you unfold it there, the hydrogen would be coming out at you in space, right? This hydrogen would be coming out at you, and the aldehyde would be going away from you in space like that. So this is also the ortho product, and it's also the endo product. Right, and if we uh, and if we take this molecule here and we just rotate it up, so let me go ahead and and draw in the ring, and I'm going to say that I I flipped it upwards, so the carbon in blue will become this carbon right here, and uh, if if you take that molecule and flip it upwards, you're you're going to you're going to convert uh, the methoxy group to a wedge, right? So you're going to get a wedge here for your methoxy group like that, and then your aldehyde is also going to be a wedge. So this is the aldehyde, and I should say this is the carbon in magenta right here. And once again, if I flip that molecule up in space, my aldehyde would be, would be coming out at me. So this is another possible product for this reaction. And if I compare, if I compare these two, right? so if I compare these two molecules right here, I think it's a little bit easier to see now that they are enantiomers, right? So we have a different absolute configuration at both the carbon in blue and 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 the carbon in magenta, right? So they're wedges in the top molecule and they're dashes in the bottom molecule here. So let's let's look at one more possibility for this reaction. So let's look at this right here. And uh, once again, if I think about the charges on my molecule, I can first focus in on my diene with its electron donating group. And I know that this is the carbon that's going to end up being a little bit negative, partially negative, due to the, due to the presence of that electron donating group. And on my dienophile, this is the carbon that's going to be partially positive due to the presence of the electron withdrawing group. And I can see the charges don't line up here. right? So the charges don't match up, because if I were to to show where the bonds are going to form for my Diels Alder reaction like that. And uh, I could go ahead and draw the product. So let's go ahead and do that. If I were to draw the product for this reaction, all right, for my Diels Alder reaction, my double bond would form here. My methoxy group would be here. And my aldehydes would be over here. So this would be the product. You can see they're not ortho to each other, right? If I were to just, you know, show show what they are. Again, I'm not doing nomenclature. This would be this would be a one. This would be a two. This would be a three. So you could say a one-three relationship, or we say meta, right? When you have this situation, so they're not ortho to each other. And, and so the meta product, it, if it forms, is not going to be the major product. It, it would be the minor product because we don't, we did not match up our charges here. And, and so the meta product is not favored. The ortho product would be favored for this Diels Alder reaction for regiochemistry. All right, we'll look at one more, one more video for regiochemistry of Diels Alder.